Hello and welcome to another episode of Fight on Montana podcast. My name is Adam. I'm one of the hosts here. I'm a Montana native. I've had a passion for Grizz Sports forever, forever and ever. Um, that was passed down from, from my grandfather, a former Grizz. And I am joined by the infamous, the one and only. Oh, so now we're switching it up. Now I'm infamous this week. Yeah, you're, you're, more, you're more infamous than me, man. <laughs> What's up, y'all? My name is Angel. Um, I've uh, played football here for the university from 2015 all the way up until 2019, right before COVID hit. Um, I've I've just had a passion, you know, just for just for the community. You know, I think they've they've been such a, a big part of my life. You know, so hopping on this podcast was, I guess, a, a small way to kind of give back to the community. You know, to kind of get a little bit of insight, a deeper look into you know what kind of goes on with the players, you know, how they're, how they're doing, you know, and, and, and this kind of extends for my appreciation to the university in general. So yeah, the whole point guys of this show is to take a deep dive into Grizzly athletics, providing insight updates and letting y'all know what's going on. Um, so today we have a special uh, podcast. We are going to like recap the demolishing win over Western Illinois that mm-hmm. it was. Um, you know, Angel got to um, be there and mm-hmm. hopefully get some grub. And you guys hopefully treated him with some grub and some beers. Um, oh yeah, man! And- it, it, it was it, it was it was a good time. Let me tell you nice. that. You know, it was one of those things. Was, I knew tailgating here was serious, but I didn't know it was that serious. And it's it's one of those things that you can talk about it, you can rave about it, you you can say how how, how the, it's the greatest thing in the world. But I mean, until you're actually there experiencing it for yourself. You know, there's really no way to really compare it, man. I thought the people were great. You know, the community aspect, you really get that feel for what it's like on Saturday game days. Everybody is each other's friends. They don't care who you are. They don't care what you've been through. You know, all they care about, you know, is the Grizz win and uh, just enjoying each other's company, man. I think that was one of the coolest things ever, dude. I really try to, I'm going to be honest, uh, drinks were offered, but I try to say on the lighter side, to just really kind of soak it in, man. Like I, I was telling people this whole weekend, man, this is my first real tailgating. You know, yeah. never in my life have I been to something like that, you know, especially associated with the university. So to be able to just be there and then see those guys run out, you know, 25,000 people absolutely screaming their brains out, you know, how how invested everybody is on the game. You know, I was sitting there and I was like, there's no way these guys are going to be more like attentive during the game than me you know obviously having the the honor of being able to play and just watching some of the guys around me listening to the people around me man they were 100 percent invested and i think that's what makes this university the best damn university in yep. the country in my opinion you know I, yep. I think it was such a cool thing to experience man and it, it was all love all the way around man so i'm just grateful for it that's awesome so yeah. is it louder on the field or louder in the stands you know what when you're on the field man it's kind of like you kind of blurred out you know, and it's not till the defense gets on the side, you know, defense gets on the field and they start, some of the players start, you know, raising their hands into yep. the air. And that's when you really kind of hear it on the field. And you're like, okay, this place is serious. If I was on the field, it'd be hard to hear, you know, yeah. but hearing it from a different perspective, man, that joint was loud, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, from this, wherever you go, man, you're, you're not in the stadium. It's loud. You're in the stadium. It's loud. You're in the stands. It's loud, you yeah. know? And yeah. it, it they're, they're, it's just a unified voice. You know, which yeah. I think is one of the dopest things ever, dude. Yeah, totally mm-hmm. is. Totally is. So, yeah, let's get down into this, man. Like, yeah, you know, it 42-7, um, yeah. which, you know, the seven that they got, it wasn't because anything that defense didn't do. It was, it was yeah. a, a thrown interception for oh, yeah. a, a pick six. So mm-hmm. um, pretty, you know, going down the line, man, uh, offense did really well over 518 yards of, of total offense. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, 242 rushing 276 passing. So pretty evenly distributed. Um, uh, you know, the four turnovers kind of, um, are a glaring thing that you see. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, with that defense, it kind of didn't harm us, didn't hurt us except mm-hmm. for the, the pick six. Um, one thing that I thought was really interesting is, the time of possession is very, very close. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, Western Illinois had the ball 29 minutes and 13 seconds, and the Grizz had 
the ball for 30 minutes, 47 seconds. Mm -hmm. So relatively close, like you said, man. I, yeah. You know what? I think starting off the game, it was it was it was a, it was a little bit of a slow start for us, mm -hmm. you know. And yep. I mean, there's there's multiple teams to multiple things to maybe you know attribute that to whether it be you know, I mean, I'm thinking myself putting myself in a position of having a huge win against UW the prior mm -hmm. week. You know, it, it's kind of easy, you know, to really just pat yourself on the shoulder and think that okay we're going to naturally be a good football team, you know, but I was really surprised how these guys came out and they, mm -hmm. they really battled regardless of it being a slower start or not. And letting kind of Western Illinois hang with us. It wasn't really into the end of the second half or the second quarter when they really were like, okay, we're ready to play. We're ready to dominate and really get it rolling, especially with that last two minute kind of drill that they had at the yep. end of the half. I think that was yep. fairly impressive, you know, and I think once they turn on the jets, they really took it and ran with it. You know, and I think that was one of the coolest things. What do you think about, you know, the jitters? You know, you you mentioned the University, University of Washington win, you know, coming mm -hmm. back home um, with that huge win, not playing a game in over, you know, a year and a half, getting mm -hmm. onto that field. You know, I don't I, I've never been that type of a, a player that's played in that. But I, yeah. I can kind of um, assume that, you know, it it can get a hold of you. And if you're not careful, it can consume you. Oh, yeah. um, and so I, I I'm thinking, yeah, like you said, just kind of um, the, the win and the kind of the, the thought process, but also just the jitters of not having a game in a year and a half mm -hmm. and kind of reacquainting yourself with, Hey, this is how a game day feels. This is yeah. what I need to do. You know, the, the, the stadium crowd and, and, you know, yeah. a lot of that is new to those guys, those yeah. younger guys. Yeah. I mean, so. it's definitely new to them. And at the same time, it's like you're not playing against, you know, you're not going from UW and then driving all the way back to, you know, a, a smaller stadium where that's, yeah. you know, five, 10,000 people. I mean, you're coming back to a packed house that's ready to roll, you know. Yeah. So that pressure is even deeper this week than I think it was last week. Because last week it was one of those deals where it's like, go Grizz. But a lot of people, when I heard a lot of chatter and a chirp, were like, you know what, I, I think they'll do what they can't do. You know, I, they'll play their hearts out instead of being like, hey, these guys are fucking ready to roll. They're ready to pound and, you know, and they're ready to get the W. And then once people obviously last week, you know, they saw that we won. That just adds more pressure coming into this week you yeah, because they beat a pretty good team last week. You yeah. know, and they, 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 they beat a solid opponent last week. And now they're coming to play Western Illinois, where, like we said, yeah, didn't do too well the first game as far as winning it. But their mm -hmm. offensive side of the ball, I mean, they played like, you know, a winning football team, you yeah. know, almost 330 yards in the air, you know, two touchdowns from Houston. And you know what? They kind of took that all away from this <laughs> week. I mean, really give it a lot, you know, you put, put in the quarterback. I think his name's Samson, right? Uh, Yeah, Connor Samson is the quarterback. Yeah, Samson. Putting Samson at, you know, barely passing over 100 yards, 111 yards. Yeah. You know, and that's not to say that that you know he's not a good player. I think he's he's going to be a good player for you know where he's at and the conference that he's in. And I think yeah. he's going to be able to do some things throughout this year. And same thing with Houston. I think he's going to be a really good player too. You know, mm -hmm. but I think it just goes to show that these guys didn't let it get to the head. They went to practice. They went back to work. They they had they enjoyed their Saturday night win last week, and then they brushed it off on Sunday morning. And said, "All right, next one." You know exactly. Well, and let's go to the offense. You know, we had 518 total yards of offense. Um, pretty much got whatever we wanted. We kind of talked about that in the preview of just, you know, the Western Illinois defense um, is their, not their strong point. Uh, they have a uh, an awesome uh, cornerback, Lawson, mm -hmm. who is amazing. Um, but then they and have that, a lot he of was – uh, qu a qu just a quick little side note yeah. on that. I mean, he, he was the only person that scored. You yeah. know, he got the pick six, took it back to the house, you know, which yep. was pretty damn impressive being in front yeah. of a crowd like that. And it, especially it was late in the game too. It wasn't like it was, you know, or I guess, I guess it was, it, it was, was early second on. Quarter. Yeah, it was yeah. early on. It was second yeah. quarter. I'm mixing up my quarters. Um, <laughs> a little too much to drink apparently, huh? Who knows? Uh, no, but I mean, going into second quarter, you know, a big time pressure game like that and be able to come out, you know, and, really just go compete you know i have nothing yeah. but respect for that player and that guy and you know i hope he has a really successful career you know over there and that he's able to make something out of this year especially coming out of uh, off of a, a crazy couple of years because yeah. of covid 
Mm-hmm. Well, and he 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 was battling. You could tell he was laying it all out on the line. He was, you know, hurt a couple times getting up off the field, coming back in. Um, so really, you know, other than that, the defense, you know, they did not really stop any of the running attack. Uh, nope. Like we, uh, uh, Angel and I were talking before the uh, we started the podcast that you know the O line did amazing. Yeah. Um, the O line, the holes were huge, um, and it wasn't. You know, just first quarter, it was throughout the whole game. And what was really interesting, what I saw too, is when they were started, you know, plugging holes and getting the second guys in there and kind of switching, because they were switching a little bit on the line to kind of get people, what I saw, they were getting different people in different positions on the line a little bit. Um, It didn't seem like there was a huge drop off. No, um, no. I saw Skylar Martin come in. I saw, I think Moses switched a little bit from yep. his position. Um, and so that was kind of cool to see that, that, Hey, the, we can do multiple things on our line. We can still not drop off, still have 242 rushing yards in yeah. the game. Um, which is amazing to see. Yeah. It's a pretty, it's a damn solid, you know, effort by the offensive line group. And like I said, man, I think having a good first team is obviously important. That's what you want. Yeah. You want a good first team position. But I think what really distinguishes, and this is a personal opinion, Mike, I think what really distinguishes good football teams to great football teams and really, really good football teams and being able to have the first team and a second team, you know, yeah. being able to rotate guys in and be able to say, hey, you're going to do just as good as the first guy that started the game, you know? And mm-hmm. I think that really is a distinguishing factor when it comes to, you know, this team right now. They got guys that, I mean, we would knock on wood. We hope that everybody stays as healthy as possible, you know, that nothing happens to any football team that we decide to play and vice versa, whoever they decide to play, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, if God forbid something happens, I'm confident that they have guys that are going to be able to step up that are ready for the challenge. I mean, I mean, I've been saying this forever. Skylar Martin is a damn good football player. You know, (laughs) he's a damn good football player. He's a smart football player too, man. And he's an, Awesome, awesome dude, man. Like, yeah. really, I've seen the the growth on that man this past years have been this past year has been absolutely incredible. I mean, think about Malik Flowers' performance yesterday. No that shit. guy has been sitting down, keeping his mouth shut, yeah. not not you know, and not complaining about it. You know, he's mm-hmm. been putting in the work silently. He, he he's been working his tail off. You know, yeah. just to get a chance to play. He's obviously a very talented player as, you know, as far as on special teams. He was actually lighting it up, you know. Oh, yeah. In 2019 and last year as well. You know, so be able to come out like that and have three receptions for two touchdowns and 100 yards is pretty damn incredible. I mean, those are yeah. damn near Randy Moss numbers when he played the Vikings and he was three for three. Three yeah. pass attempts and three touchdowns, you know. Do you yeah. remember that game? Oh, yes. Yes, oh, I yeah, do. Man. Gosh, man. So, I mean, I think it was, I think it was the right time. You know, yeah. it was the right time. It was all part of God's plan, and, and it worked out in his favor because he was just willing to put in the work in and be happy with what he And had. he looked like Randy Moss out there just blowing by people. They yeah. didn't even, like, they'd get, you know, their initial bump, and then he would just run past yep. them. Just like, like, he would have five, six yards of, like, distance in between yep. uh, to catch those balls, yeah, which was dude, amazing. Dude is athletic. Dude yeah. is real athletic, man. Don't ever tell him I tell him. He, don't ever tell him I told you he's a good football player. But <laughs> he's a damn good football player, man. Uh, we won't tell any of them. We, we don't want him yeah. getting big heads, right? You know, you don't know, man. You don't know, right? <laughs> so you know, and you know, uh, the offense got it going. You know, we scored forty-two points, um, and we we kind of knew that was going to happen. You know, uh, mm. Washington defense is, is is big. They're really aggressive. They're good. You know, we knew, you know, playing an FCS team that did not have the greatest defense, we would score a little more points. I think uh, with our predictions, we are both in the 40s. um, And so we kind of expected that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. And I really think, I mean, it was one of those games where um, sometimes you just have those games where you got them from the first snap, you know. It really yep. is. It really is from the first name. But I think I think Western Illinois was a little bit surprising. If they had a little bit of beef, they had a little bit of skill up up front. Yep. You know, yep. I was watching them play. I'm I'll be, obviously, you know, I'm going to say, and I truly believe that, you know, we have the better players on the on at least on the front end of things. You know, yep. but I I was really impressed with some of their play, and I think it was yep. even more impressive that as the game went on, 
it was it was one of those games where you just slowly but surely start to strangle your opponent. Yep. You yep. know, and it's yep. something that like you know it's coming and it's happening yep. at its own pace, and you're just letting it play its course. You're dominating yep. the guy over and over and over and over again. I mean, the offensive line gave up zero sacks and they put up yep. 500 yards of offense and they put up over 200 yards of, of rushing, which is a pretty damn good day if you ask me. Well, and one of the things that w- w- kind of uh, blew apart the Grizz last year and also this year is this how of a second half team they are. Mm-hmm. Um, last year we led uh, points in the FCS uh, in the second half and it, and it's picked up from where we left off, you know, um, we outscored Washington by 10 points in the yeah. second half, uh, in Western Illinois, we outscored them by 21. Yeah. Um, well, and it so 21 or 28, 21, probably no. 21, right. It was 21, seven. And then it ended 42, seven, right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right, you're right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, math, better, I better state. know how to add, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, yeah, yeah. that's amazing, an amazing fact. Also, zero sacks for the offensive line, like we said. Amazing job keeping yeah. Cam upright. And like um, you said, man, and like you said, man, not only did they bring the ones, but they brought the twos in, too. Like yeah, exactly. It, was, it, it wasn't just the ones that played the whole game, and then, like, the last, you know, three minutes of the game, they're like, all right, twos, go get some reps. You know, yeah. it was like, hey, they brought in the twos with plenty of plenty time, playing time. And yeah. even then – you know, it was kind of the same situation on the defense side of the ball, too. You know, they brought in the twos yep. pretty with significant time to play. And I mean, I mean, I mean, transitioning onto the defensive side, I mean, I, I get I mean, went off, you know. Yeah. And I think I mean, going kind of kind of going back to the offensive, you know, Cam, I think he did a phenomenal job, man. I, yeah. I truly, truly did. I think he made his right reads. You know, I think he understood the situations that were at hand. I think he made some great calls and which is which is half the battle when you're getting lined up as an offensive line. You know, yeah. having a quarterback being able to run up and say, hey, you know, we're, we're running yellow, 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 which is, you know, a slide play to the left. You know, you know, mm-hmm. one of those things uh, I think is truly incredible. And I think he did a great job. He was definitely a general out there. And I think yeah. uh, I think it showed in his game. I mean, he targeted what I mean, how, four different receivers caught a touchdown, yep. you know, and then he targeted what how, I don't even know how many receivers, like eight of them or something like that. Right. It was it was a lot because uh, yeah. Kellen White got one, Mitch got one, yeah. Flowers. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, one thing that I I, I want to ask you about Angel is one I think I've seen, and I don't know if this is just me, but a lot, these last two games we've been playing a lot more power um, mm-hmm. and not a lot of spread. Like last mm-hmm. year, we, you'd have the two wide receivers plus, you know, you'd have your slot guy. Um, I really, you know, I've seen that a little bit, but not as much as last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm wondering if that's going to be something that they, hey, we're going to take that out the halfway mark or mm-hmm. or what is your thought on that? Because I just haven't seen as much of that lately. I'm wondering mm-hmm. if they're just, hey, we need to get our power formation, you know, and our, our line solidified before we start doing that. What do you think? Have you, do you well, agree it's, with that? It's, it's one of those things where it's always going to be game to game. It's always going to be, you know, opponent to opponent. I mean, there were yeah. certain packages that were – you know, introduced the week of game uh, because of the the type of, you know, defensive front that they had or defensive scheme that they had or, you know, some things that we noticed that were, you know, that we could possibly take advantage of. So okay. I really think it's not necessarily because they're trying to stay away from anything. I think it's really just all part of the game plan. Okay. And at the end of the day, if you can dominate a person running a power or, or running just an inside zone play over and over and over and over again, I mean, my philosophy, I guess, or my kind of line of thinking as, you know, as a coach would be like, if it works, why change it exactly. until it does and, until until we run? And that doesn't mean don't practice anything else. I'm just yeah. saying if it's working for you, keep it, you know, and, yeah. and then once you get to the point where as we grow in the season and we run into teams that, you know, that are a little bit more challenging in certain ways and tricky in certain ways, that's when we start unleashing, you know, the tricks in the back. You know, that's when we start unleashing like the, the other plays that that they haven't seen, you know, it, it's, I think it's one of those things. It's just a mental edge, you know, being yeah. able to come out to the game knowing, Hey, all we've ran is inside run. And we haven't even begun to run our counters and our powers and, you know, all, all, all these, all these screen plays and stuff like that in order to get the job done. Like, I think that's a promising thing to have in your back pocket, you know, using exactly. it at the right time. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, you want to go talk about some defense, man? Yeah, man. What a day for them again. Jesus Christ. Oh. 
I mean, I read something today, and uh, forgive me, I'm terrible about knowing who writes what and who says what, <laughs> but it was it was basically talking about how in seven, essentially seven quarters, you know, nobody has scored on us. You yeah. know, in seven quarters yeah. of football, you know, since since I played, they still have not court, <laughs> scored on us. I think about that. I've been removed from football for two years at this point, bro. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a pretty damn good statistic, and I think those guys went off, and I think it's one of those things is. They come out ready to play. They come out with energy. And it's one of those things. They trust each other. You yeah. know, the cornerbacks trust that, hey, you know what? If something happens, you know, God yeah. forbid something happens that I miss a tackle or, you know, I, I an offensive line comes out and, you know, blindsides me and I'm on the ground, that the next guy up is going to come. The defensive line is, I, I mean, I think that's really one of the most impressive things. And I implore people to just watch the hustle. Watch oh, yeah. sideline to sideline and hustle. Yeah. Yep. It's something that they preach religiously and you see it in the gameplay. You know, they're excited to be running from one side to the other side, even if they don't make the tackle. I mean, you see how they celebrate with each other. And I think that that's one of the most beautiful things ever, dude. Exactly. You know, one thing that I've, you know, uh, Eric Tabor and the uh, communication people can do this and, and then I want credit for it. But I think they should create a Grizz cam because there's some certain players that I would like to individually watch on that team because they are all over the place that mm -hmm. I would just love to just constantly just watch them. You know, Justin Ford, I think, would just be an awesome Grizz cam, just him battling, trash-talking Marcus Wellnell and Patrick O'Connell. Mm -hmm. Those guys are all over the place. I would love to see them, you know, um, doing that also. Um, you know what I, then, I think? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, man. No, I was yeah. just going to say, man, I think it'd also be cool to just get one of those players. I mean, you watch the NFL, some of them getting mic'd up for football Oh, games, yeah. Oh, you know? yeah. Like, yeah. how, how freaking cool, you know, if, 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 if you were able to mic up one of those guys. Yeah. You know, like yeah. me personally, like, I think Joe Babros, I mean, granted, I may be a little biased, man. He was my roommate for, you know, <laughs> a, a little bit over the greater part of a year. But there was never a question that I thought he was going to be a, a super talented player, you know. Yeah. And that guy's fire and intensity, I mean, he is on a different level if you know him on a personal basis, man. He's one of those guys that's like, okay, you'll kill me, you know. You'll kill me <laughs> just, just for, you know, looking at you the wrong way. You know, he's one of those guys. And you would never think it, he's just the nicest guy. You know, he, he's a California dude. You know, he has a kind of a, like a little surfer accent, you know, so from California, man. But he's one of the greatest people I know, dude. And just, you know, nice. going out there and watching him play, you know, I mean, he, he, don't, he don't matter to him. You know, and yeah. he's strong as hell, dude. Oh, my goodness. That dude is strong yeah. as hell. You know, yeah. so it, it's one of those things, dude. It's like I would love for those players to be mic'd up. Yeah, dude. Wait, I'd even pay, you know, because I know they have Grizz All Access. You could put that on there, charge six bucks, you know. Yeah. That would yeah. be awesome. I'd, I'd pay six bucks to do that. That would be awesome. Hey, who knows, man? We, we might have to reach out to university. Present exactly. Them with this. With a business plan. A business there you go. Portfolio. We're so all about our portfolio. business plans, man. We're all hey, about man. it. <laughs> exactly dude also you know the defense you know six sacks six yeah. dude six crazy crazy um shout out that, to pat just... oh yeah he had what two and a half dude i think he's, he's like the defense player of the week this week yeah. he had like two and a half two and a half or uh, two or two and a half sacks like three and a half tackles for, you know tackles for loss yeah. um i don't even know how many solo i think he had a gang of them though you know yeah. marcus well yeah. showing up again with another interception yeah you know uh Coming out and just being able to play like that, man, I think it was absolutely incredible, man. It's that defense is fun to watch. I don't care what you say. I mean, they're fun to watch. They're energetic, yep. and they all have their own style and personality, you know. And it was nice to see some of the guys on the front end of things get some sacks too. I mean, Eli Ooh, Alfred yeah. came out with a sack. Joe Babros yep. came out with a sack too, and yep. then the uh, Mid Michigan State transfer Todd came out. With Todd, a sack yep. too. yeah, yep. I think. Well, it, was it just great. it just seems like we're getting a lot more push on that yep. line too. Yeah. Um, you know, with the pressure, Justin Belknap and Brabros getting pressure on the outside. We're even getting Gubner and um, Alfred getting pressure. And Todd, yeah. like you said, um, from Michigan State, getting some yeah. pressure on there, too. So yeah. um, it's just really nice to see. Man, we're just loaded out, up on defense. And then you see Michael Matthews, the second crew, go out oh, there dude, and, and just awesome. do all over the, the freaking floor, man. It's just, yeah, dude. It's amazing. And I think uh -huh. that 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 that's just the attitude they come with every single day, man. I think that yeah. I think those coaches done a good job implementing that. Hey, we're gonna work extremely hard, and we're gonna be the hardest working people on the field. Because I don't care what you say, man. When when talent don't work hard, you know, uh, hard work beats it. Yeah.
Well, you know, we, we, we lost the turnover battle, but we still got one turnover with the defense, mm-hmm. um, no touchdowns um, this game as well. You know, it, it's crazy to see that top, the, the Western Illinois was top 15 in passing offense. Mm-hmm. Um, and we held them for 151 yards yep. total offense, not, oh, yeah. not passing yards, total offense, 111 yep. passing 40 yards. Rushing um, is just amazing. And they had the ball for over 29 minutes and they still were held that yeah. with that, yeah. that less of yards. That's going to be the biggest thing moving on into, you know, uh, FCS playoff play, you know, obviously yeah. that's, that's down the road and I'm obviously, you know, looking ahead, but one of the most important things, you know, that you see and that's tried and true, man, is turnovers, you know, make a difference in the game. You know, yeah. if you turn the ball over, turn the ball over, over, it just gives up. <laughs> damn, goodness gracious, huh? Turn the ball over. It just gives the other team an opportunity, man. And, and yeah. it really, really, I mean, I've seen it affect my games. I've seen it affect other people's games, NFL games. Turn, turnovers are cr- absolutely crucial. You know, yes. and I yeah. think that's going to be the one thing that we're going to have to dial it in, you know, and I know those yeah. coaches, I mean, they have, you know, little things that they do high and tight, you know, that, that I think are absolutely inc- incredible. They, they preach it, you know, religiously to a point where it's, you know, it's like, okay, damn, I, I get, I understand, I get it, you know, but yeah. it's one of those things where I don't care if you understand it to get it. I'm going to still hound it in your brain, implant it in your brain, high and tight, high and tight, no air. Absolutely yep. no air when you're running the ball. So if you ever watch those receivers or running backs run with the ball, they're never at any point, you know, have it out dangling. They're just, you know, kind of out. They're always going to have it high and tight all the way through yep. the end zone, you know. Yeah. And so, well, uh, yeah. And, and one of those things is, you know, Cam had two interceptions. You know, Isaiah lost the fumble, but the rest of the game he did really well. Um, and then Chris came in and, and threw one as well. But, mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm not too worried about – uh, the one Chris threw, he kind of just kind of threw it up there and kind of, if I'm, um, well, I think that one was kind of behind the person and, and it kind and I think Cam had one there too, where it was kind of behind and not where it would have been, but if it would have been where it was supposed to be, it would have been, um, a, a good throw. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think I, it's one of those things that, that I, I think it's, uh, um, I hate to say it, but I think I think that's a learning lesson for Chris. You know, yeah. I think yeah. it just provides a little bit of perspective, and I think it's the same way for Cam too. I think he's the type of guy that's super analytical and that wants to be better and wants to put his best yeah. foot forward. And I think he understands those situations where it's like, okay, like I can't be doing that. I got to be better. How can I be better? You know, yeah. Instead of just finding an excuse, you know, blaming it. Oh well, I threw it behind, or if somebody was on me. It's like, okay. What can I do to prevent that from happening again? And that's always been his mentality, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, it, it was it was a great game to watch. It was it was fun. Um, you know, we have a bye this week. We to rest up. Um, I didn't see Xavier Harris in there, so hopefully he is is resting up and and getting healthy because um, mm-hmm. we'll we'll need him um, as the running back crew is kind of uh, depleted a little bit. Um, we've got some guys there that they're, I think they're putting in their Bergeron and then, uh, what's the other guy's name? Oh, big guy too. He's like 230 pounds. He's a big boy. Holy cow. Um, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Uh, running back. Yeah. Nick not Osmo. Not Osmo. He's already hurt. Well, what's the guy that, that played, um, this last, uh, game that was like 230 pounds he was from i believe Helena. drew turner turn it was it turner yeah turner yeah, yeah there you go. turner yeah yeah, yeah. and He's i think that's boy. that's another impressive thing man i mean they were they were a little bit kind of short end short end of the stick when it comes to running back yeah and the fact that they still were able to kind of come out with those types of numbers i think was pretty promising is it something yeah. that you know that they, they'll probably need a couple more numbers for sure and so yep. it's one of those things that you know pray and hope for and uh, speedy recoveries and just, you know, pray for the best thing, press possible outcome when it comes to that, you know, I mean, cause some of those guys, I mean, I, I mean, I, I know just as well as any, you know, injury does, does some things, not only physically, but it does some things to the spirit. It does some things yeah. to the mental, you know, it yeah. does some things to the soul, man. And so I think, you know, just sending over, if you guys know those guys and just let them know, Hey man, I'm praying for you. Hope things are going to go well, you know, and speedy recovery, regardless if it's a, Hey, it's a rolled up ankle or, you know, a, a broken arm. Like you, you don't know those situations or what that does yeah. to a person. So, I mean, I would just implore people out there just be a little bit mindful about it. Exactly, exactly, man. 
Well, you know, we, we have a week of, of no football, and then we're back at it with yep. Cal Poly. Yeah, man. Yeah. Crazy, 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 man. <laughs> I think yeah, regardless of, you know, obviously they started off the season, you know, yep. 1-0 against uh, University of San Diego. And yep. San Diego, well, for the past couple of years that I've seen them, they've been a pretty damn good football team, which yep. is surprising because they have zero scholarships on their team. Yeah, they're in the Pioneer League that doesn't mm-hmm. have any scholarships. Yep. Doesn't yep. have any scholarships, and they were able to – I mean, I mean, 2019, they made the playoffs. 2018, they made the playoffs. I think 2017, it might have been – I may, I may be confusing a year in there, but, I mean, yeah. they've been a solid team for a little bit – for a little while. I don't know necessarily how the rest of the season is going to pan out for them. You know, yeah. and um, but I don't think they're necessarily a pushover thing. I think they come from tough, co- tough coaching, and they know what it takes to, you know, at least be in the, in the conversation and the competition. You know, oh, and, and they that, and they played they played Cal Poly right this last yeah, week, not this last mm-hmm. week. That was the first week. That so they ended up playing. Okay. They ended up playing Cal Poly, and Cal Poly ended up, uh, you know, playing pretty well against them. I mean, yeah. they they obviously won the game. And then last week they ended up playing Fresno State, and that was a whole different game. But the first game <laughs> against uh, San Diego was twenty eight seventeen. So yeah. it wasn't like it was just a pushover game. You know, no, it no. kind of looks like from the looks of things that they were they were in the in the competition for a little bit there. You know. And then yeah. obviously heading out to Fresno State this past week, they, I mean, they got railed. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, they scored nine touchdowns on them. Yeah. You know, so it's one of those things. And it's crazy because a lot of, I mean, I've had a lot of people at work ask me, like, how do you think Cal Poly is going to match up triple option? Well, news to everybody, they're not running triple they're option. They're not running the triple option. No, yeah, uh, Hugh Bald- Baldwin's got him running something entirely different. Yeah. So, th- so. let's talk about, th- th- let's talk about uh, Baldwin for a little bit. He, uh, was a huge part in making Eastern Washington. Oh you know, yeah, definitely. Kind of a, a household name for a lot of people in this yeah. area, and obviously Washington too. He played. Uh, he coached for a long time, and in his last stint as a head coach, he ended up. I think I read it something. He ended up posting. Uh, I think a a fifty eight fourteen Big Sky Conference. You know, record in that span of a couple of years. Yeah, eighty five and thirty two overall from two thousand eight to sixteen. While he was head coach, five Big Sky titles, um, six FCS playoff bursts, and one national championship in 2010. So cow. this guy is definitely qualified to be yeah. anybody's coach. You yeah. know, yep he is a great he is a great coach. Uh, mm-hmm. No matter what his team is, you know, and Cal Poly is kind of a hard a hard um, place to, you know, they've had some so, good years and they've had some bad years, but you know it. It not it like a tech school? Something like that, dude. I don't and know. And so it would be kind of hard to, you know, just make them a powerhouse in, in, in the uh, FCS Big Sky. Would um, I, yeah, would I think, well, I, do I think that he'll go back to, you know, that same dominance that he had before? Maybe no. not. I mean, I could yeah. be wrong. I mean, if, if I'm wrong, then fucking boohoo. You know, oh, well, I was yeah. wrong. You know, I don't yeah. really care for it. But uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But when it comes down to it, man. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that's not worrying me, but it's like at the top of my head. Oh yeah, I worried about Cal Poly in general when it comes to coming to play us. No, yeah. no. You know, no. Uh, am I impressed with anybody on the team? No, no. And that's not to say anything mean about it. I'm sure they have some ballers. I'm, I I know they represented obviously at the you know the the media you know yeah. uh, uh, convention that they had you know a couple of months ago when they went out. I think it was in Washington. Um, yeah. But when it comes to you know stats and statistics. You know, obviously, it's his first year, or I guess technically his second year at this second point. Year. Yeah, uh, it's his first year, so it's going to be a rebuilding year, I think. Yeah, it's going to. This is his second years. year. This is his second year there. You know, he he pretty much, I believe, cut the you know the quarterback crew that he had. So mm-hmm. it is going to be an up and down season until mm-hmm. he gets what he wants. I'll I would if I was an AD, I'd give him at least four years to kind of get what he would want there. Yeah. So you, you can actually see what he's doing. And, Nothing and think, scares me about Cal Poly. Yeah. I always fear going to California to play just because I think it's 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 a, a long road trip. And mm-hmm. for some reason I just I fear you know the Grizz, we've had some hard times in California sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but the only thing that makes me feel uneasy is him as a coach. Yeah, it's um, him as a coach. That's exactly that's, what I was that's the say. only thing. That's the yeah. only thing. 
And and that's so. because he's a damn good coach, you know. And yep. I mean, he's he's shown time and time again why he's a damn good coach, you know. And yep. he's played a lot of Montana football teams, and you know, and he's he's uh, for a couple of them it was it, it was back and forth, you know. Exactly. It was it was truly a ri- rivalry, and I think he was a big reason on why it's considered what it is today, you know. Yep. Simply because there was a lot of competition there. So you know, do I do I wish him well? Uh, not when he plays us, but yes. You know? um, <laughs> when he plays the cats, yes. <laughs> yeah, when he plays the cats, when he plays those guys, yeah. But uh, when he plays us, you know, a different story. But uh, uh, that's really the only thing. I mean, he understands football for a reason, and uh, he's definitely going to take uh, a personal approach when coming yeah. to play us. You know, because it's yeah. at it's it's at our home again, right? When we play, yeah, Calipoli, it's, it's, right? it's actually a homecoming too. So yeah, it is homecoming. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. Exactly. We'll play. Exactly. Well, this, this is the weird game because we have one home, one uh, home game, and then we go to Eastern Washington. That game at Eastern Washington's at like eight thirty. Yeah. Uh, mountain exactly. time, which is crazy. Yeah. Exactly, so. dude. I mean, it, it's it, it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be. It will. I think it's one of those games where everybody's going to be a little bit surprised. Yeah. It's going to be every, everybody's going to be a little bit surprised. You know, I still think we're going to come out with a W. I still think that we're going to perform and really excel in, I guess, how, how we've been excelling. But it's yeah. one of those games where it's like, okay, it's going to be a little bit more interesting. There are going to come some challenges. There are going to come some things that they throw at us that, you know, we might have to adjust on the fly, on the spot. And that's the game of football. You know, like I had, exactly. I, I've been saying this for a couple of weeks now. It's a game of, of chess, not checkers. Well, and I wonder, you know, um, We'll do our preview of Cal Poly, you know, here in the next couple of weeks. It looks like they do have they have they have another hard oh, man, they have another hard game. Um, mm-hmm. South Dakota, um, they they play South Dakota at home, but they yeah. they beat Cal they beat San Diego. They didn't lose yeah. to San Diego. They beat San Diego. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's what, that's what I was saying. They beat yeah. San Diego. Yeah. They lost to Fresno State, which is which yeah. is a tough game. And like I said, man, they got scored on. I think it was like what nine times or something like that Total. yeah the, the score was 63 to 10 yeah so about nine times gonna yeah. i mean i mean as as a program that does two things it demoralizes you the game of you know yep. so you go home especially playing at fresno state which is obviously not too far from cal Poly, so it's not a crazy crazy long trip back home but it's still one of those things that where you sit there and you reflect oh, yeah. and as a player you're on that bus and it's nighttime and no lights are on, everybody's quiet, you know, nobody's kind of partying, everybody's listening on their phone or listening to music, just waiting to get home because they're sore and treatment. And it's one of those things where you sit down with yourself and you're like, what could I have done more? Yeah. What could I have done better? You know, I, I've been I've been on some of those trips, you know, and coming back home, you know, the whole time, it's just, you know, constructive criticism as far as, you know, what do I need to do? You know, oh, just getting what? pissed off too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, angry, you're thinking about certain plays and you're like, damn, man, like, what did I, what was I thinking there? What was I doing there? You know, already yeah. getting ahead of the curve of trying to, trying to go through all the emotions of a loss like that. You know, it's mm-hmm. one of those things. Cause you, I mean, you prepare extremely hard and you give your everything on a weekly basis just to come out with a loss. You know, it's, it's one of those demoralizing things. And then the next day, I think it fuels a lot of guys. I think they make them realize, Hey, one loss is enough. Let's not make it yeah. two, you know? Exactly. And then from there they're going, obviously they're playing, you know, a, a, a South Dakota, you know, which had some a pretty some pretty good wins this past yep. couple of weeks. You know, yep. I, I I don't I don't even know. If, are they two and zero? I know they're one and zero for sure. You know, let me check it check it out. Let's let's see what we're here. South Dakota. I don't know. Oh no no you're no, no you're, I know they won and yeah I know that they won last week for sure. But Kansas the first week they ended up losing by three. They almost beat Kansas. They almost beat Kansas. 17, oh man, fourteen. I remember I uh, that that makes sense too because I remember it was going yeah. viral on Twitter like all Kansas fans were storming the field because it was like their first. <laughs> yeah. Why like, are oh, you man. storming? You just beat South Dakota. Like, I know, why bro. Are you? exactly. Dude. That's so, so like, pitiful. You're in FBS school. Why so are you I, storming the field? Yeah, right. So I think it's one of those <laughs> things where it's like, I uh, oh. I think they're gonna come a little bit hungry to play South yeah. Dakota, and depending on how that game goes, you know, after that. It, it, I, it, regardless of where you want to admit or not, I think I think a lot of teams think about us early on in the year. You know, yeah. they think about us yep. early on in the year, and they think about it, and they kind of plan it out, and they're ready for okay. We we'll fucking have to go over there, twenty five thousand people, all the way yep. to the middle of nowhere. In their eyes, you know, because when I was in California, I was like, where the <laughs> hell is Montana, dude? It's the same type of thing, you know. So it's just like yep. okay, 
once they get here, you know, they're thinking about us already, I think. And I think uh, when they get here, I think we're, we're just going to be able to show up. We're going to show exactly. up. I think we're going to have another productive, you know, game. I think offensive line is going to have a hell of a day. I think Cam is going to go off again. You know, I think it's one of the things yeah. where it's going to be a strangle, you know. It's going to be more it, of the same. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it really is. I think it'll start off a little bit slow, you know. And I think once we get adjusted, I think we'll get – I will say this. I think we're going to get adjusted sooner. I think we're yeah. going to get our feet under us a little bit sooner because I think that's going to be the emphasis for this uh, these next two weeks, really yeah. making sure we start off on a more aggressive – maybe not even aggressive, but a stronger note, you know. It, it, always, it almost reminds me of – like you've seen those like – heavy white heavyweight boxing fights back in the day where yeah. like the first round was just like the round where they kind of feel each other out and then from there on it's like catastrophic just like punches and stuff like that yep. that's what yep. it reminds me of the grizzes they're you know they're, they're testing things out they're seeing what they can get set up mm-hmm. for the next quarter and then boom you don't even know what hit you and you're like holy crap where'd this come from and I think that's one of the things I think that's one of the things you get to work on, you know, yeah. and I think it, for whatever reason, I mean, when I was there uh, years previously, it was always something where we were a good team. But a lot of times it was like, OK, we turn on the we turn on the gears a little bit too late or yeah. with not enough time. And we put ourselves in a position, you know, to kind of yeah. try to battle back into some games. You know, yeah. and I, this team obviously team is more than capable. And I think the biggest emphasis going into these next two weeks is really, hey, let's hit the ground running a little bit faster. So it's not necessarily uh, a bad thing. But it's something that definitely, you know, we can be improved. Because in the game of football, you come back, you know, with the perfect game, they're they're gonna find things to critique. You know, whether it be exactly. hey, your foot's tweaked out two inches, you know, fucking fix it. You know, it's one of those things. You yeah. know, and that's 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 the name of the game. You wanna be better, you gotta be better, and it's never good enough. Yeah. Well, and you know, you have anything else? Because I think this is gonna be our episode this week, guys, and then we'll have a the following week, we'll have a preview of uh, Cal Poly Montana, and um, we'll go from there after that. Do you have any closing things that you want to talk about, Angel? Uh, not necessarily, man. Like I said, as always, man, I'm just super grateful to be doing this. You know, I mean, yeah. it really is a humbling experience, and it's one of those cool things where, you know, my work and people come up to me. It's like, you know what? I listen to your show, and, you know, I really, really appreciate it. And I really, really like it and stuff. Those types of things just make my day knowing that, hey, you know what? I'm yeah. I'm not doing this to, you know, impress anybody. I'm not doing this uh, really for any other purpose than, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm passionate about the school. I'm passionate about this community, and I, I want to be a contributing member in any way that I can. You know, yeah. and if that's, you know, telling my story, if that's, you know, shedding light on certain topics, you know, as student athletes face, you know, I don't mind doing that for people, you know. And so it's one of those things that I'm just really grateful to be doing this, man. And I just appreciate you guys' support. Yeah, and we, we definitely uh, like what you guys are telling us. Um, we like the feedback. We want more feedback as well. So um, like, like, like us, rate us, review us, subscribe. Um, and also, you know, tell us what you what you think. What what do you guys think about the the game this last week? What are your guys' thoughts? What did you guys mm-hmm. take from it? We want to hear what you guys have to say too, because this podcast is not just Angel and I's. This is this is a podcast for the fans. Um, so we want to hear from you as well. Um, I can't I, I can't thank people enough for listening and taking mm-hmm. the time out of their day to listen. Um, it's just it's truly remarkable. Yeah. Um, that we get to do this, man, and, and I, I love it. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well, appreciate you guys. Be sure to uh, follow us, like, you know, rate, subscribe, whatever, dude. It don't yep. matter. You know, if you hate us, tell us you hate us. <laughs> it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. To <laughs> feedback, me, yes. Feed, feedback. <laughs> you know, and then uh, and we'll definitely be sure to catch you guys next week with a new episode. So tune into that. All right, go Grizz. Fight on.